Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Devotions. And this is, well, got to find my glasses. You know I'm going to need those. It's July the 4th, 2020. And wow, what a humdinger of a year this has been. But it's Independence Day. Let's cut to the chase. I pray that uh, you are in some way commemorating, celebrating the 4th of July. I pray that you, uh, I don't like to get too political, but although at times I may, we'll see. I pray that uh, you've gotten your head out of revisionist history books. You've forgotten your, what some like to call education, uh, which was probably something akin to indoctrination. And actually really learn the history of your country, what it stands for, what it has fought for, what it has meant, despite its imperfections. When people talk about America, I like to say, well, who would you like to compare America to so we can have an apt comparison? And sometimes that ends that discussion. I find people who have not traveled outside of the U.S., not to some island somewhere, you know, for relaxation, but to... A place either on a mission trip or where you've actually done business there and you've seen up close and personal how the rest of the world operates, particularly third world countries, but even even uh, what we would call Western industrialized nations and things that you would. Um, you might reflect and pause. You might remember those who, who have given um, their lives uh, for our country and also, um, you know, in times when many people question whether what they were giving their lives for was 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 correct or not they willingly gave of their lives for their country um and their families deserve to be honored i pray you believe that but you still believe that um i think for those of us who are christians should believe that um that's all i'll say about that but happy fourth of july enjoy it with your friends and family hopefully maybe you can also spend some time with the lord and some time in prayer um so Anyway, that's enough. I'll, uh, I'll get on with our discussion. Uh, we, we've been spending a good deal of time in the um, Beatitudes, better known as the Sermon on the Mount. Um, again, also, if you've enjoyed these um, these times together, just go to the this video and just uh, so Mark Prince, The Narrow Path Live and in Color. Just click the subscribe button and then go up and hit the little bell so you can get that as they come. Again, it's just designed, and I reiterated a lot and will continue to. It's just designed to... Oh, and I have my I Speak Fluent Sarcasm shirt on. I have no idea why my family got me that shirt. I'm still thinking about it. You might already know why. I'm still... I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. I like that shirt. Um... But anyway, the time here is meant to just share. It's very simple to share what whatever thoughts and things the Lord puts on my heart as I'm doing my own personal uh, time with the Lord and study in the mornings before I go to work each day or even on the weekend like I did this morning with my wife. Uh, my wife and I, uh, for all of our um, uh, for all of our our flaws, have I would think one person asked me one time what was what would you say was the one thing that has kept you two together and, and at it really trying to love each other all these years and trying to serve God together? What's 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 the glue that um, kept you together? And I would say unequivocally that that hour time frame in the mornings where we sit in our beds and each of us individually read our own Bibles and pray and then we occasionally talk at the end about issues of the day coming up and what we need to do, but then also what the Lord may have spoken to us about, you cannot put a price on that time. Uh, I encourage you as families, uh, as men in life, if you've not done those things, however imperfect you, you, you are, and others may think you are, it doesn't really matter. The Lord will, he will, um, he will imprint his life into your life if you'll, if you'll covenant together to spend that time and it will change your marriage. Uh, absolutely. So there's that. Um, we'll get back to our next passage, which says in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, verse 21, you've heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Here Jesus is saying, listen, he, you say this, but I want to tell you what that really 
means, okay? But what this what you should have understood it to mean had you had an actual relationship with God instead of just uh, you know, some some nominalism or nationalistic pride because your God is is this, that, or the other. And we have a lot of that here in America too, but he said, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable uh, to judgment. Uh, whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, raka, in other words, you will be liable to hell of fire, to the hell of fire, skihena. So if you're offering your gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. Um, evidently in some of the traditions of uh, Judaism and the Mishnah, a time of Yom Kippur um, is something that was said gets us right with God and atones, but not with our brother. So in other words, we get things right with God, and you can get things right with God. You can pray and, and seek God and, and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins, etc., etc., etc. Even sins that you have with those you're in relationship with, i.e. your brother. But if you have not made an effort, as Jesus is saying, to actually go and restore that relationship... Uh, to own up to whatever your part in the matter is, whatever it is you've done to wrong your brother. You have to suck up your pride to do that and look at your life in the lens and, or in the mirror that Jesus is reflecting back at you. And if you've not done that, then, then you may be right with God, so to speak, or at least in your eyes, but you're not right because you haven't made it right with your brother. If you're a Christian, I'm here to tell you today, and, 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 and this is a bad witness to non-Christians, I've got to tell you, but if you're a Christian here today and you've, um, you've, uh, you've just kind of solidified in your life or you've just kind of just, you know, said in your life that, you know, I don't like that person, I never will, it's always going to be that way, and you've never tried to restore the relationship on your end, it doesn't, doesn't matter whether or not that person has received your... Um, your apology or your desire to get it right with them. If they don't, it's off your head. Then you pray for them, you forgive them, you forgive yourself for whatever you did to them, and then you rock on. It's not up to you to make the relationship better if that person is unwilling to do so. Hear me saying that. But if you have not ever made the effort to say, really, I don't want to be in a, in a difficult relationship with you and I'd like to restore, even if you are the one that you think, and maybe you're right, did nothing absolutely in the wrong relationship. But because out of your Christian understanding, out of your Christian framework, who you are before God, you are obligated uh, to your brothers and sisters and, and those around you and you're in relationship with to seek to restore the relationship and to be loving and winsome. If they decide that they don't want that and they push you away, then, then you're free. But we have to be willing to make that effort. It, it's not good enough to think that we are right with God when we're not with our brother. This is what the law's true intention is. This is what the true Israelite is trying to tell us. This is what the second Adam is getting right for us here. And um, it's... Uh, when he's talking about, you heard that it was said to those of old, he's obviously talking to the original Israelites out of the Exodus, back in Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5. This is something that's really, I think, really important for us to understand. That we have uh, the responsibility to, uh, to restore relationships. Jesus gives us, you know, kind of the, the um, Jewish understanding of that. You know, uh, being liable to the council, you know, he says if you're, you're going to the altar and, and you realize that you don't have things right, it's kind of like when in communion Paul reminds us in the Eucharist, Paul reminds us that if we go and we celebrate the cup and the, and the wine and we have, a, we have something at issue with a brother or sister uh, or, or we have sin in our own life that we have not dealt with that we've kind of whitewashed and just forgotten about or glossed over, Paul says that's not going to get it. 
And he said, that's why there's many sick among you, and you need to take care of that. You need to, you need to get yourself right with God before you take part of this, 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 this sacrament, this, this holy uh, uh, devotion to God. And, and, and it's something that we really, really need to pay attention to. He also talks about, you know, coming to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going to him to court, lest they hand you over to the judge and the judge uh, to the guard and you be put in prison. You know, a lot of times we, 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 we just wrongfully ignore things that are going on that, that end up even in our relationships to come back, um, and even in legal matters, to come back to haunt us because we've been so stubborn and unwilling uh, to maybe be the fall guy, to maybe actually sometimes apologize. And I'm not saying this is something we should do all the time, but maybe maybe you have to apologize because of your love for Jesus, even when you, you, know, you may not be reciprocated. Maybe they owe you an apology too, ten times more than the one you just gave. Maybe you don't even owe one. Um, but be, because of our unwillingness sometimes to even do that, Jesus is saying this can, this can present a lot of problems in life that become much bigger, bigger problems. Um, and and it, it, it's, it's no secret to, to say that um, there, are, um, there are many people who are, who are not forgiving, who can't restore relationships, who are eaten up bitter often, um, who often die alone unnecessarily because of um, they won't they won't um, they won't be peacemakers they won't try and seek to be people of peace as much as it is possible as much as it depends on me to seek to live at peace with all men now fact of the matter is some people will not desire to live at peace with you but once you have made the decision to live at peace, then it's off you. And Jesus says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Keep following on the narrow path. Jesus wants to deal with you. One of the greatest, um, I can remember hearing a message years ago, and I'll close with this. The preacher basically was preaching on, on marriage. And this is this is something we're going to, we're going to get to marriage here probably tomorrow or the next day um, in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. But he, he, you ever been in one of those messages where the, the preacher is preaching and as if all of a sudden that message was directed right at you? That's how the Holy Spirit operates through the Word of God. He seeks to con convict us of sin so that we'll get right with God. He shows us our picture in the mirror of what we should really be seeing. And he was preaching on marriage and everything, and he, and he said something to the extent of quit, quit saying, you know, if, if, if she would just change, I'll change, or vice versa in any relationship. He said the fact of the matter was if the, his finger just kind of went and pointed right in between my eyes and said, God wants you to change. He'll deal with that other person. You change. You let the gospel affect your life. It doesn't matter where everybody else is falling. A lot of people, the Bible says, that's why this is called the narrow path. A lot of people, it says broad is the way to destruction. Okay? Most everybody's on that path. That There's a lot to that. Just think about a lot of people, even people who claim they're on the narrow path. They're not. They're on that broad one. The narrow path that leads to eternal life, there's few that be to find that. There's few that are willing to um, be who Jesus calls them to be, irregardless of which way the crowd goes or which way the wind blows. I commission you today to be that person. Jesus will bless you. Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit. Give us your peace today to be reconcilers, to be peacemakers in the world with our relationships. Any ought we have against our brother or our sister, Lord, may we get it right. May we call them today and get it right, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.